What's the story behind this car? Okay, so this is my 1974 Maverick. I bought this car brand new, drove it home from the dealer, tore it apart and made a hot rod out of it. First week I owned it, I, I picked it up on a Thursday. I was at Milan Dragway with it. It ran 1650s. Took it home, tore the whole drive line out of it, put a nine inch in it, top loader four speed. And I was waiting for headers and some parts for the motor to build the new motor. They didn't show up in time. So on Saturday, I put the motor back in the car and just cut the exhaust off and hung a pair of glass packs on it. <laughs> Went back to Milan, it ran 1550. I drove it home on Sunday, pulled the motor back out of it. That week all the parts showed up. I built a Paxton blown small block for it. And the next Saturday night it went 1171 at Detroit Dragway. <laughs> so it was a money sucking machine. <laughs> I didn't, I was young, I was 18 years old. I didn't know that much. I, I, you know, I kept, I had to pay to learn, right? And I used to wind at 8,800 RPM. Yeah. So I broke so many motors in this car. Like I say, I just didn't know. I didn't know enough to have a good fuel system. I didn't know enough to have good parts. I couldn't afford to buy all the good stuff. I was working at a dealership as an apprentice mechanic and spent every dime I made on this car. So uh, I got married in December of 75 and I sold it, had to sell it. I had a $91 payment and I couldn't afford it. So I sold the car, I sold it to a friend of mine initially and he kept it for a number of years and he sold it, we lost track of it. So the car was gone 35 years one night I, I was working at Lingenfelter and I was waiting for a car hauler to show up and I was on Craigslist and I'm going through the Craigslist ads and I see one that says 73 Maverick 351 Cleveland. Like, no way. Well, I had put a Cleveland in it before I sold it because I kept blowing up small blocks. So I called, left a message, no answer, called back the next night, I get the guy's wife. She said, oh, that was my husband. She already sold it. Like, oh, man, well, I was the original owner, blah, blah, blah. So we have a bunch of conversations. So right? you knew from I knew it was my that car. it was your car. Yeah, from this little picture, right? How did you know it was yours? Because it, it you know, the color, the, the 351 Cleveland, the top loader four speed. I had put a Mr. Gasket vertical gate shifter in it, so it just goes straight forward and back. I mean, I, it was my car, I, you know. It still had the same rear tires on it I had put on it new in 74 when I bought it and what oh year gosh. did you find it on Craigslist 2011 Wow so <laughs> long story short I ended up he'd already sold it he put me in contact with the guy that that he had sold it to that guy agreed to let me come see it so I go out and look at it well when I sold it to one of my one of my friends he's still a good friend of mine so when I found it I called him and said hey I found the Maverick He's like, what? I see, I found the Maverick. So, so he came with me to, to, to look at it. And the guy that had it had been able to buy his first car back. And so he had a little compassion for me. And so he uh, gave me a number and, and literally it was probably all I would have paid for it. But today is, a, is nothing, but mm -hmm. then it was. And so, so I bought it back and then it, it, uh, it sat for uh, three, four years till I, I was trying to find parts. You don't just buy Maverick parts, right? And so I, I chased the country buying parts, but it has so many little things like these shock towers where they're cut and this plate's welded in. My dad did that in 1974 with a torch and coat hanger. That's how we welded those in. My dad's been gone now 27 years, right? So those had to stay. Did you tell the guy you were trying to buy the car from that story? Yeah. To try to get him to like... Yeah, he stand. understood. You know, That's I mean, really cool. Yeah. The traction bars that are on this car. So I had it in my garage, in the garage. We had an attached garage and I had it up on jack stands and I was putting a rear axle in it. And I had these old, ugly, rusty traction bars. And my my mom was in the door to the, to the garage and my dad was out there sitting in a lawn chair and I'm under the car. 
my mom says, what are those ugly things? And I said, they're traction bars. And she said, you can't put those on that new car. And I said, mom, it's all I got. I got no money. <laughs> she says, well, how much are is that? What? And I said, well, Lakewoods that I really want are like a hundred bucks. And she said, well, I'll give you the money. Go get them. <laughs> so she gave me the money. So they're on the car. So I completely restored them. You know, when we did them, we, we repowder coated them. I had the Lakewood details recreated. So they're back on. The same ones that? The same ones that, that, are, that she bought brand new are on the car. This car has got to be extremely <laughs> sentimental to you. Oh, yeah. I mean, this, some things, they're like, they're just like meant to be. Like, how did this car survive all those years without being modified to just almost like wait, was waiting for you? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So it had 2,500 miles on it when I sold it. When I bought it back, it had 4,900 miles on it. <laughs> And I've only put, I, I, I still haven't got it to 5000 Really? And I, it has so many rare parts, right? I worked in a Ford dealer when I bought it. So I put a 430 gear in the back, and to make the Speedo correct, Ford sold for Boss Rail 2 Mustangs, this converter. This, it's like a gear reduction. It slows the Speedo down to make it work. Well, I bought one. You just walked up to the parts counter and ordered it. It was, I don't know, 20 bucks. And it's in this car today. I see him sell for over a thousand bucks for that <laughs> little adapter, but it's in here. The transmission is is I bought off our used car lot a '65 Mustang 289 Hypo car coupe, double black coupe that came with those that transmission and a nine inch Ford axle, and I needed those parts for this. And it was a little rusty. I paid two hundred and twenty-five dollars for it off the used car lot. Oh my gosh! Which was wow. twenty-five more than they gave the guy for it. And uh, so those parts are still in this. It has that VIN tagged K code hypo transmission in it. I have I changed to a Mosier nine inch when I redid it, but I have that real one in the room, in the storeroom. Wow! So, I mean, this car has so many. I I, I used to street race it a lot. And uh, my parents, it was in the garage. I had blown up a motor. We built a new motor for it. Got it in, got it running. And it was sitting in the garage. And uh, my parents went out on a Saturday night. So they had parked, my mom had parked her car against the garage door. So I couldn't open it to get the car out. Because right? <laughs> she knew I was a street racer. And so I snuck into the, uh, uh, under her car and unhooked the shift linkage and put it in neutral, rolled it down to the street, and then put it back in park and got the door open and got the car out, went out street racing. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they come home and I'm gone in the car and, and her car's at the street. But uh, I got caught drag racing in this car one time, got a ticket and, and right bef a little while before I got married. And I couldn't buy car insurance for two years. In 1975, they wanted $2,700 a year for car insurance because I had a drag racing ticket. Wow. So I put the car in my dad's name and he insured it and then I drove it, but. Yeah. Did it? Did you do the cowl hood back then or is that an upgrade for now? That's an upgrade. It had a flat hood on it. Then. And I, I have a tall ramp, a 2660 center squirter. I have, this is kind of the drag race trim. Normally it's more retro. I have a, like I say, the tunnel ramp. I have a original, they made a, Cable, everybody used cable drive tacks in race cars then. So you ran a big cable off the distributor inside the car. I have all of that for this. I have the distributor, the tack, the cable. I have three sets of wheels and tires for this car. So I wanted Kregers. I had Anson's on it originally. I wanted Kregers, but they were on back order. So Jack McCormick is kind of a famous guy. He ran a place called Wheel City. I worked for a guy named Dave Lyle, and we built a Pinto Pro Stock car in his gas station. So Jack McCormick says, Kreger just came out with these new super tricks. They're really not supposed to be driven on the street, but you can, you want a set of those? So I bought those and had them on the front and had Kreger's on the rear. And that was kind of a look in the early 70s. So this was one of the first cars ever with super tricks on the street. So today I have the Kregers, I have a complete set of Super Tricks, and I have a complete set of, of motor wheel flies, which was the pro stock wheel of the day. 
The fronts are magnesium, the rears are aluminum. So I have three complete sets of wheels and tires for it. Did you do anything to it that you couldn't afford to do back then, but could now? To All kind of, of it. <laughs> like, I mean, like complete your vision, basically? Yeah, well, yeah. this, you know, I, when I, the small blocks were poor boy built, right? I had a 302, blew that up, 289, blew that up. Uh, then I put a Cleveland in it, a bone stock Cleveland. And uh, that was how I got 2,500 miles, because I would drive it to the racetrack and drive it around. <laughs> this is a 408 inch Cleveland. This is, you know, strobe. It's got a scat rotator assembly in it. It's got TFS aluminum heads, but I painted them blue so they look stock. Hmm, um, fooled me. That intake, like I said, I got a ton of RAM with a pair of 660s. Those valve covers are original Boss 351 covers that a friend of mine had laid in the roof rafters of his garage. And when I bought this, he said, I got a valve cover for you. And those were that. But I put a vertical gate shifter in it way back when. That's still in it. Stuart Warner gauges or what was in it. We made the roll cage. The interior is all original. So this was a bench seat car and we put buckets in it out of a Cougar and we had a trim shop at the dealer I worked at so we reupholstered them to match the rear seat which is what the upholstery was. And this is the same upholstery from then? It's, it's not the same but it, it's new old stock. I scoured the country and found the original material still brand new on the bolt and bought the bolt of material to do these seats. Wow. The headliner is the same way. It's original 1974 material. And you wouldn't think that stuff is still out there. It is. Like I say, it took me three years to find parts. The Maverick script on the, on the, the C pillar, I took those out of the boxes where they had been since 1970 and put them on this car. They're brand new, NOS, perfect. So being in Michigan, was this car garage kept? Or yeah, did you have it's to... whole life. Okay, well, that's awesome. Yeah, no, it, have to it's all original panels. metal. Uh, it had a little, the paint had flaked off the cowl and had a little rust in one door. So when I sold it to a friend of mine, after I couldn't have, you know, couldn't afford it, he moved to Florida. And he was towing it, he went to Florida for like, a year, was moving back, was flat towing it on a tow bar, and lost control on the expressway, and took both quarter paddles off of it. Hit things and smashed both quarters. <laughs> so he had to fix all of that, but other, you know, other than that, the rest of it's all original. It looks awesome. It's not very often you see Mavericks. No, there aren't many around. It's filthy now, sorry it's been sitting around, but well, work gets done in here. Yeah, this <laughs> is a shop. <laughs> this is my hoist. This is kind of for my projects. The rest of it, you know, we have 12 other hoists. Those are for, you know, builds and everything else. But this is kind of my spot. I was trying to see if it was a four-point cage or if, did you do that Six. for drag yeah. racing? Or? Yeah, yeah, we made that when we redid the car. It'll run high nines the way it is, which technically needs a full cage, but you can just slow down a couple tenths and you'll... With how much horsepower? 650. Yeah, so you don't need very much power to make a car is like these move. like 2,200 pounds? Or... It's about, uh, it's about 2,600. Okay. But I have a Dart, Dodge Dart, it's got 1,700 horsepower. I have a GMC Canyon with 2,100. A a Jeep Wrangler with a thousand. Yeah. A Wrangler? Yeah, we have a place <laughs> over on the sand dunes that we play with it. So. Ah. I have a go fast addiction. Which one is brings you the most joy to drive? Um, you know, I just, I love them all. It, it you know, I don't have a favorite car. I mean, like I drove my, I have a Dodge Rampage with a mid-engine Hemi in it. And I drove it on Power Tour this year and, and did the long haul in it. And I truly, truly enjoyed that. Right? But my wife has a 72 Chevelle with all aluminum, big block Chevy in it, a six speed. It's a pro touring car. And, and I like driving that, right? I've driven that on Power Tour two or three times. We got a Levitt Camaro convertible with a blow now last set up. Same deal, right? Every one of them hits a certain point. 
I, I build them the way I want them. I, I fortunately can afford to do it, and I have the skill to do it. I have great people that work for me, so that, the reality is they get to do a bunch of it. But you know, you can't really tell, but like every piece of stainless has been polished. Oh yeah, oh, you wow. can definitely tell. Now you can. <laughs> Wipe the dust off. With the dust on it, it looks normal. Yeah, but every, I mean, that's the way we do every car I built. Every piece is, is done, right? I have a 64 Falcon with a Gen 3 Coyote in it on hydrogen. And um, it's, every piece of trim on it is original, but it's got the side molding. It's just, everything has been stripped, polished. Even the grill has been full hand polished. The details are important. Yeah. Makes a difference. Yeah, you can ask anybody that works for me. I'm not the easiest guy to get along with when we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> because I have an expectation. Yeah. And, and it has to be here. Right? That's why we built SEMA level cars. That's why we, you know, I, I mean, I, I build a bit of theme. This car has $800 worth of chrome bolts in the motor compartment. Really? Most people never notice it, but I do. I noticed that your fender aprons had chrome bolts going to the shock towers. Yep. I don't know where the other $800 is, though. I, I mean, these bolts are four, five, six dollars a piece by the time you put a are these just like you take a regular stainless bolt and you cut the markings off and polish it? No, or? these are actually chrome plated. Oh, really? Yeah, they've been dipped with copper, then dipped with chrome, and then. Wow. Yep. Is that the original grill or is that like billet? No, that's it's an original style. It's still plastic. I did a small bumper conversion because they have big bumpers on them. So I had to, I did the conversion to put the small bumpers on them. I just think they look better. Yeah. It looks awesome. But this chrome hood rod was $235. <laughs> That's funny how small the world is. I had no idea. See, you, you said you remember me from dragging my broken ass off the road at Roadkill Nights when I broke the transmission in the Escalade. And yep. I don't even, I remember getting dragged off, but I don't remember who did it. So well, I'm sure you were like so flustered. I was yeah, I was mad. I was like, I just fixed this thing a week ago and yeah. now I have to figure out how to get it back in here. But it that's... was all my golf cart would do. <laughs> First I didn't think I was gonna be able to do it. My golf cart's turned up, it runs at like twenty seven miles an hour. <laughs> so yep. No, that's the game, right? So because that's why you gotta be nice to everybody too, because you never know. Like yeah. that, that guy with the golf cart might know a thing or two. Might, you know, he's or, old. Or build a truck that runs on hydrogen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, so I've done roadkill since the inception. Huh. So they, I, the first year I built General Mayhem, and I built General Maintenance. So those, that, that Mayhem was the first ever Hellcat swap in the world, did that for Freiburger. And we raced Gas Monkey Garage that year at the Silver Dome. And then the next year it moved to the M1 Concourse. And uh, this is the, well, this would be the seventh event, eighth year. But uh, ever since, I've run all the tech, all the staging, all of all that for it. So huh. all, I, put a, I have a team of guys that work with me and gals. And so they all, we handle all of that. From the time your registration is approved until you pull on the starting line, it's my responsibility. Okay. So I'll be in full transparency, I was mad that I got put in big tire because I had 17 inch wheels. It's okay. <laughs> I was like, how does this make sense? I, I, every year uh, at Roadkill, I get people that, that complain at me and bitch at me. My favorite is the guy that told me two years ago we were there and I wouldn't let him race because he didn't have DOT approved front tires. <laughs> well, the, people don't understand, but the Department of Transportation is there. And if they catch us allowing one to run with non-DOT tires, they shut them down. They shut the race down, not down. Wow. So anyway, this guy got in my face kind of, and, and, and you know, I deal with that all the time. So it's just like, right? So the guy's in my face. And his, the favorite line ever was when he told me, if you were a racer, you would understand this. Yeah. He wants to ruin everybody else's business. Yeah. 
I remember the way that the way that was when I had to load up and then pull back around. I was stuck with my truck and gooseneck trailer like kind of behind the the staging lane, yeah. and it was kind of waiting there to get out because I had, couldn't back up the giant trailer down the street. And where I was was where the railroad crossing thing was, and it came down and thumped the roof of my oh, truck. No. But it like because the I think Freiburger Super B was next to my truck, so like the it hitting the roof of my truck gave Dulcich enough time to look at it like oh man and he like lifted it off while I backed up but it had like this dangly thingy that came down yeah. so like I don't know if my truck you wasn't there car. I may have saved his car <laughs> and I'm like every time I go under one of those things it's like I cross that off my bucket list I have been hit by one of those there you go that's my memory from that place I was looking at this and like thinking how awesome it is that this is like the stock fender aprons and stuff and everything looks so clean and nice and just it's awesome yeah well there were things like the msd box right this is the anniversary msd box and those have been gone for 10 years probably when when i needed one so i called uh, a friend of mine russell stevens and said you guys got any of these are left and i said i kind of really want to put one of those in my car and three days later it showed up Oh my God. <laughs> right. So. Thank you for talking to us about this. Well, I'm happy to do it. It's really cool to me. <laughs> it's nice to meet a, a young lady who likes a maverick. <laughs> they're out there. <laughs> I feel like a lot of women just, they they like motorsports or they, they're interested in cars, they just don't speak up about it. Yeah, they're awesome. My wife says, uh, she's got a number of cars of her own, and uh, she said so many times, why did you buy a Maverick? Why did not you buy a Falcon or a Mustang? Something that was cool. Because yeah. these were the lightest ones you could buy and the fastest. And then my son, he says that when I die, He'll be tacking up for sale banners at the cemetery. <laughs> yeah. Is that the Tesla son? Yeah. yeah. That's brutal. Yeah. He's got uh, a couple. He's got an Impala SS, a 94, and then he's got a Bronco that, that's got a 535-inch big block in it. And then he's got, uh, we built the E-Rod Camaro for Freiburger years ago, 79Z28. So I bought that back from him, and my son has it. Huh. So he's a gearhead too. He just, I don't know. He's got a Tesla, he's got a smart car, and a Mini Cooper. <laughs> and an Escalade. Uh, you know. He's got a little bit of his father's car addiction.